Good afternoon. Thank you for joining me. This is an introduction to the Confluence Sierra chart layout, and the reason why it's called Confluence is because we created a confluence chart over here, combining the primes and the deltas of various time frames. The um, numbers here that you see are all the primes. That's the 144 prime, cyan to orange. The uh, 1597 uh, prime, uh, that's um, uh, blue to orange. The 610, the green to orange. And then, of course, the um, 4181, purple to orange. So, again, you, you've got a confluence of all the prime, primes of the various time frames. And then I built an alert where the, if the 610 prime, uh, the, the um, uh, 144, the 610, and the 987, um, no, no, not 987, 1597, uh, all matched, you color the background you color the background. So if the, um, if the um, 144, 610, and 1597 all match for the up, you color the background green. If they all match for the uh, down, you color the background red. Now the deltas were a new addition, and the deltas are these dashed lines. Um, well, given that, I better not make the 1597 dashed, <laughs> because that just adds the 4181. So let me change this so that the 4181 uh, prime is not dashed, so we don't confuse it with the deltas. We just keep it solid. Okay, there we go. So all the solid lines are the primes, all the dashed lines are the the deltas. And as you would notice here, the, um, the 1920 delta, which is the 1920 time frame is my anchor, already changed color to a red even before uh, the price action showed it. And then the 1597 got into the act showing a red. And when two of them show a red, hey, that's a good time to go in uh, for that short. And the um, 4181 delta is still showing blue, telling us that uh, uh, we are in a jitterbuggy kind of market. Why jitterbug? Because prime and combo two and combo A are together um, on, on the main chart here. Even though we're supposed to be uh, well, there finally <laughs> the 4181 finally changed color. It finally wants to go down. Uh, so the, you saw the delta of the 4181 flicker red. So it finally agreed. So apparently in real time, you're only going to get agreement on the two time frames, 1597 and the 19, my anchor 1920. 1920 is already saying that it wants to go up again, but it, this may just be a retrace, depending upon how your uh, low order primes look. Well, you got two of your low order primes going up, so this could be a sizable retrace, so you probably should have taken that. Okay, what else are the components of this um, layout? You have the bid ask volume. If you're going uptrend, the, the uh, bid volume percentage is going to be lower than the ask volume percentage. If you're going downtrend, the ask volume percentage is going to be lower than the bid. So right now, we're supposed to wanting to go down. If they're just about even, that means uh, they're going sideways, or somebody's going sideways. Yeah, there you go, 987 over here is going sideways. Um, also, uh, if you find that the bid is low um, and supposed to be going up, but the price action isn't going up, that means one of these jerks are flat. So right now, the 610 is flat. Um, the 1597 is beginning to be flattish. Uh, the uh, 144 is beginning to be flattish. Uh, so therefore, uh, we may just go sideways here. So, bottom line, uh, the main chart I use for the light crude is the 377 tick. Um, 
and then over here on the right side we have the 144, the 610, the um, 987, the 1597, the 1620, and the 4181. Now, why do I call the 1620, the 1920, not 1620, the 1920 an anchor? That's because um, besides being able to uh, to trade the color uh, change, um, where um, B, which is this dotted line, intersects uh, combo A, is generally the start of would be the start of that trend. So it, it marks it a little more faithfully than the 1597. See where I have that that cursor on the intersection. Uh, and where it shows on the main chart. So that's why I call it the anchor because at, because if you look at the 1597, the 1597 B does not cross A until much later. And it doesn't cross it until here and by that time you're already well on your way with that trend. And then the end of the trend is not shown very well by the 1597 because the 1597 cross through A right there and uh, actually it's about equivalent with the 1920 1920 cross through right here but uh, similar in, yeah so once again various time frames and they're marked 144, 610, 987, 1597, 1920, 4181. And the 1920 is my anchor because that's where B crossing A is more faithful to the price action uh, changes uh, during a trend. And the other nice thing that I, I like to do is um, make sure that uh, the, the cursors on these time frames are pretty much in sync with one another so it's easy for me to uh, see what's going on uh, as well as what the story is and who tells you the story the jerk so what is the jerk story being told us by the um, by the 1920 uh, we're essentially inching our way up and just going sideways uh, on the way up or as the 4181 tells us, yeah, we're just pretty much uh, on an upward trending kind of market today. So this confluence layout is out there. Um, I have links to it, and hopefully this video will help uh, introduce it to you. You should already know what these various lines are, but just in case you don't, the jerk um, is this fat blue and orange with the black line through it. The prime is this thicker solid line that goes green and red. Combo A, the thinner solid line. Combo B, the dotted line. And delta, the blue and red line. So, and then these lines going across like this. This is the purple is the zero. Um, that's one beauty about SDS is we're able to put a zero on the price action. And uh, with that zero line, we know that the market goes in cycles and it's when these cycles get into sync with one another like here you can see it in the confluence of the primes that hey uh, we better be in that uptrend or get into sync with one another for the downtrend hey we better be in that downtrend so that's it next time bye